Newcastle Water's story begins in the era of explorers and overlanders. In 1861, explorer John McDowell Stewart was the first European to reach this area, finding a splendid waterhole amid the arid inland and naming it Newcastle Waters after the Duke of Newcastle. The presence of reliable water, including the large nearby Lake Woods, made this location a prized oasis in the Barclay region. By the early 1880s, South Australian pastoralist Dr William Brown took up the pastoral lease, and by 1883 he'd established Newcastle Waters Station by overlanding a mob of cattle from Western Queensland, led by famed stockman Darcy Err. Brown, who also founded Springvale Station near Catherine, installed Alfred Giles as manager of Newcastle Waters in its infancy. However, the station's early years were challenging. Dr Brown's pastoral empire was hit by financial troubles and in 1995 he was forced to sell Newcastle Waters to John Lewis, an Adelaide-based pastoralist. The Lewis family would successfully run the station for the next 50-plus years, weathering the booms and busts of the northern cattle industry. Under their tenure, Newcastle Waters became a prominent producer of beef cattle, by the early 1900s, the station was turning off large mobs of cattle for market. For instance, over 1,100 head were overlanded to Railhead in 1905 and similar numbers in 1910, a remarkable feat in the era of horseback droving. During the 20th century, Newcastle Water Station sat at the crossroads of historic stock routes. It was a vital stop on the north-south droving route, where cattle travelling between the Territory and Queensland could rest at the ample waters. A small township at Newcastle Waters grew as a typical drover's camp, complete with a pub, store, police station and stockyards. The government even excised a square mile from the station in 1930 to formalise the town. Legendary drovers and Aboriginal stockmen passed through during the glory days of overland cattle drives. A bronze drover's memorial now stands in the old town commemorating that heritage. By the 1960s, however, the rise of road trains, big cattle trucks, had largely replaced long cattle drives, and the Newcastle Waters Township quietly faded into a ghost town, preserved today as a historical site. Like any long-running station, Newcastle Waters has faced its share of hardships. It endured bovine pleuropneumonia outbreaks in the 1920s that led to quarantines on moving stock, a stark reminder of the constant vigilance needed in cattle health management. In 1951, a massive bushfire roared through the region, scorching over 2,500 kilometres or 1,000 square miles of the station's grazing land. Station hands fought the blaze with backburning, trying to save pasture and infrastructure. And in the wet season of 1965, heavy flooding stranded the station's only school teacher, future folk singer Ted Egan, for six weeks, forcing him to live off bush tucker like wild turkey, illustrating the remote and rugged conditions staff sometimes faced. A major turning point came in the 1980s when Newcastle Waters entered a new era of corporate ownership. In 1983, a syndicate led by Kerry Packer, Australia's best-known media tycoon, along with pastoralist Ken Warriner, Peter Bailieu and others, purchased Newcastle Waters Station. Packer's Consolidated Press Holdings integrated the property into what became Consolidated Pastoral Company, in fact, CPC was formed in 1983 specifically with the purchase of Newcastle Waters Station and a few adjacent holdings as its cornerstone. The station's sheer size and reputation made it the jewel of CPC's portfolio. And young James Packer, Carrie's son, even spent a year jackarrowing on Newcastle Waters to learn the ropes of station life. Under CPC, Newcastle Waters benefited from investment and professional management, positioning it for the modern beef export era. CPC and the Packer family held Newcastle Waters for over two decades, 
By the 2000s, as the global beef trade expanded, the station played an important role in supplying the Asian market. In 2009, the Packer family sold their entire pastoral portfolio, including Newcastle Waters and 17 other stations, to the British private equity firm Terra Firma for a reported $425 million. This transferred CPC and Newcastle Waters into international hands, reflecting the growing global interest in Australian cattle assets. Terra Firma added even more stations to CPC over the years, but eventually decided to divest. After a period of piecemeal sales, in 2020, CPC was acquired outright by the UK-based Hans family office, headed by investor Guy Hans. The 2020 sale, estimated at over $500 million, included around 3.2 million hectares of land and 300,000 cattle across CPC's holdings, with Newcastle Water Station remaining a flagship property. Today, CPC continues to own Newcastle Waters, making it part of one of Australia's largest privately owned cattle operations. It's worth noting that the land's traditional owners have also been formally recognised. In 2012, the Jingili and Mudbura peoples achieved a native title determination over the Newcastle Waters area, including the old town site and parts of the station, acknowledging their enduring connection to this country. Many Indigenous stockmen and their families have lived and worked on Newcastle Waters over the decades. Indeed, the struggle for equal wages for Aboriginal stockmen in the 1960s echoes in local memory as well. This rich tapestry of Aboriginal heritage and pastoral history coexists at Newcastle Waters, giving the station a cultural significance beyond its economic value. Fast forward to today, and Newcastle Waters Station operates on a massive scale that few agricultural enterprises can match. Spread across more than 10,000 square kilometres of land, the station is subdivided into numerous expansive paddocks. Herd management is a complex dance of people, cattle and infrastructure, finely tuned to the rhythms of wet and dry seasons. At the heart of operations is the station's Brahmin cattle herd, well suited to the tropics. The herd usually numbers around 45,000 head, depending on season and market conditions, making Newcastle Waters one of the largest cattle breeding properties in the country. In good seasons, the property can carry up to 65,000 head across its vast pastures, a testament to the quality of feed on the Barclay Tableland. The country here is known for its Mitchell and Flinders grasses, and the station is relatively well watered by bores and semi-permanent waterholes, meaning cattle can spread out and thrive, even in drier years. Around 20,000 of the herd are breeding cows, primarily Brahmin mothers, that produce the annual calf drop. The calves are weaned and grown out on the station, and each year roughly 13,000 young cattle are turned off, that is, sent to market. Most are live exported as feeder steers via Darwin to Indonesia, where they'll be fattened in feedlots to supply the Indonesian beef market. Others might go to domestic feedlots or processes, but Newcastle Water's strategic location near Darwin makes it a key supplier for the live export trade to Southeast Asia. Managing such a large operation requires a substantial workforce and significant infrastructure. Newcastle Waters employs about 50 people on site, effectively making it a small community of its own. Station staff include stockmen and stockwomen, often called ringers in Aussie slang, overseers, a station manager, mechanics, bore runners who maintain the water bores, and cooks and support staff. Many live with their families on the station. Children attend the Newcastle Waters Station School, a one-room school in the historic township that caters to both station kids and local Aboriginal children. Life on the station follows a seasonal pattern. The dry season, April to September, is the busy period for mustering, branding and transporting cattle, while the wet season, October to March, brings monsoonal rains that can bog roads and grass up the paddocks, a time when maintenance and planning take priority. Mustering at Newcastle Waters is a major undertaking given the station's size. 
In the old days, stockmen on horseback and their cattle dogs drove the mobs to the yards over weeks. Today, the station uses a combination of horseback stockmen, motorbikes and helicopters to muster cattle efficiently. It's not unusual during a muster to see a helicopter buzzing low over the scrub, spotting cattle and guiding them toward the stock camps, with ground crews following up, a common practice on large top-end stations. In recent times, some stations have even started trialling drones to assist with mustering and monitoring livestock from the air, adding another high-tech tool to the station manager's kit. While helicopters remain the primary aerial mustering tool, Drone technology is rapidly improving and could play a bigger role in the near future. Back on the ground, Newcastle Waters is crisscrossed by an extensive network of boreholes, water tanks and troughs to ensure cattle have water across far-flung paddocks. Water is life on a cattle station, and in the past, a bore runner would drive hundreds of kilometres every week to manually check pumps and tank levels. But now, however, the station has embraced remote water monitoring technology to streamline this vital task. In recent years, Newcastle Waters invested in about 20 solar-powered water level sensors that remotely report each tank's status via satellite. If a tank's water level drops below a set threshold, the system sends an instant alert via satellite link. This means staff can respond before a trough runs dry, a huge win for animal welfare in the scorching NT climate. The adoption of remote telemetry has eliminated many routine bore runs, saving thousands of kilometres of driving and countless labour hours, while giving managers peace of mind that cattle won't run out of water. Given that mobile phone coverage is absent over 90% of the property, these satellite-linked systems are a game-changer in how the station manages its water infrastructure. Beyond water monitoring, Newcastle Waters Station has been at the forefront of introducing ag tech innovations to the outback. The station was an early trial site for the Precision Pastoral Management System, a project that uses automation and satellite connectivity to monitor livestock. On this 10,000 square kilometre station, they've tested a system where cattle effectively weigh themselves. A set of automated yards at a watering point uses solar-powered electronic scales and RFID tag readers. Cattle are lured into the yard by the water. As each animal drinks, it crosses a weigh bridge which records its weight and identifies it by its ear tag. These weight readings are transmitted via satellite to the station office computer in near real time. The system even allows remote control of automated gates. For example, it can draft heavier cattle into a separate pen, meaning managers could remotely sort cattle by weight without needing stockmen on site. This technology provides continuous monitoring, allowing managers to detect changes in animal condition long before they're visible to the naked eye. Now the station can react faster. For instance, destocking or moving cattle when feed is running low, hopefully before everyone else floods the market in a drought. This kind of proactive management helps preserve land condition and animal welfare. In addition to precision weighing and water monitoring, the station uses satellite imagery to monitor pasture conditions across its expanse. By combining cattle weight data with satellite photos of pasture growth and ground cover, they can track the land's carrying capacity and avoid overgrazing. Software tools and mapping programs allow managers to plan paddock rotations and infrastructure development, like new fencing or additional water points, with much better information than in decades past. Digital record keeping software is also employed to log animal health treatments, breeding records and paddock histories, replacing the old paper station books with cloud-based data accessible to the company's head office. Key tech innovations at Newcastle Waters include remote water monitoring, satellite connected tank sensors, about 20 units, alert staff of water levels, eliminating most manual bore checks, automated cattle weighing using precision pastoral system with automated weigh bridges and NLIS ear tag scanning at watering yards, allowing remote drafting by weight, satellite pasture monitoring, Satellite imagery of pasture biomass and ground cover linked with rainfall data to guide stocking rates. Aerial mustering aids. 
use of helicopters for mustering is standard, but drone trials are emerging for scouting and fence checks. Genetic and breeding tech, artificial insemination and embryo transfer programs improve herd genetics. The station maintains a Brahmin stud herd of around 4,000 breeder cows, producing about 1,000 replacement bulls each year for CPC's northern stations. Despite all the technology, Newcastle Waters still relies on skilled people, stockmen, bore runners and mechanics to keep things running. Technology supports the crew, not replaces them. In practice, Newcastle Waters blends traditional stock sense with modern data-driven insights to achieve top productivity while sustaining the land. Newcastle Waters Station is not just a pastoral property, it's a significant agribusiness asset. Its scale and output make it a multi-million dollar enterprise and a linchpin in CPC's portfolio. In 2020, when CPC was sold to the Hans Family Investment Group, the company, including Newcastle Waters, was valued at over $500 million. Among CPC's holdings, Newcastle Waters stands out as a trophy property. At 10,331 square kilometres, it's larger than some small countries, Comparable stations in the region, carrying around 25,000 head, have fetched tens of millions of dollars. With nearly double that capacity, Newcastle Waters is one of the most valuable cattle properties in Australia. The station turns off about 13,000 head annually, generating significant revenue from cattle sales. At average prices between $800 and $1,500 per head, Newcastle Waters' annual gross revenue likely runs in the tens of millions of dollars. CPC continuously invests in infrastructure, technology and vertical integration, such as its Indonesian feedlots with a combined capacity of over 35,000 head. These feedlots provide a ready destination for Newcastle Waters cattle, capturing added value through grain finishing and exports to Asia. One of the most striking developments is the Sun Cable Solar Project, a proposed 10 gigawatt solar farm covering about 12,000 hectares of the station's land. The $20 billion project aims to export solar electricity to Singapore via a 4,500-kilometre submarine cable, potentially supplying up to 20% of Singapore's power needs. CPC supports the project, which would diversify income and improve station infrastructure, such as roads and potential rail access. On the cattle side, CPC aims to improve branding rates and beef output per hectare through better genetics, nutrition and management. The station's role as a breeding hub contributes directly to this strategy. The station has also trialled improved pastures and forage cropping, showing how innovation continues even in harsh northern conditions. In summary, Newcastle Waters Station is both a historic pastoral institution and a modern agribusiness powerhouse. It contributes to the regional economy, provides jobs and bridges old industries like cattle with new frontiers like renewable energy.